Uh, the weather in Sugarland is awesome again. And oh, even the moon's out. And it, but this camera won't focus. Speaking of cameras, I thought I'd do a slight comparison since I've restored my DCR TRV19 to fully working condition. Now, of course, this is being shot on my Canon EOS Rebel T6i. In a second, I'm going to switch over to the TRV19 right now. So this is probably what video would have looked like back in 2003, which is when this camera was made. This camera records to mini DV tape in slightly over 480p. And it's actually, believe it or not, one of the last good low light cameras that Sony ever made. That's this small. I thought I thought it'd just be cool to try and film some stuff with the TRV19 for a little bit of nostalgia. I went through some of my old mini DV tapes and I just got kind of interested about the format. So I thought I'd do a little comparison between the two cameras. Now, of course, the lighting is not great, but it is a nice flat profile, no shadows to deal with. Nice, fast-moving subject there. This was the camera that I used to film the beginning of this video, which I'll actually turn on. And it's on. Yeah, there we go. So now it's recording. Obviously, the T6i doesn't have very good image stabilization, but it has way better image quality. Possibly because I'm holding the camera not that great. So the purpose of this video is not only to just showcase a working TRV-19 from 2003. It's also to give a bit of a tutorial on how to get footage off of this camera. Now obviously it uses tapes as the media, so there's not really an easy way to get the footage off. There is a USB port on that camera, but the problem with this camera, this is called USB streaming, and the streaming will only works with Windows XP and possibly older computers. Now what you actually want to do is you want to use the DV input, you see that there's a little DV signal with a weird looking connector. And that's also the reason why I have this MacBook out because this is the computer that I use to capture the footage off of this camera. So what you need to do is you need to get one of these special little iLink cables that you can get on eBay for like four dollars. That's how expensive mine was. And you need to plug it into the DV port on the camera, which I'm having a little bit of trouble doing. There you go, can't really do that with one hand. And then goes to this port on the MacBook, and this is FireWire 400. And then I use iMovie 909 to capture the video. So I'm going to turn on the camera, put it into VCR mode. And then I'm going to hit this little button on iMovie that is actually spinning right now. There we go. Pulls up the the camera capture thing. So you can see it's 8 minutes and 47 seconds. I remember the time code that I started at. It was, I believe, 6 minutes and 25 seconds. So I'm going to rewind back to about 6 minutes, 4 seconds here. And I always do the manual import here. The automatic will import everything on the tape. I only want a certain part of the tape. So now I'm going to hit import. And I'm just going to create a new event to name it 1025.17. That's what I always do for my projects. And see, that's an old project. So. With the manual, you can just fast forward through the parts that you don't want. See, it's going faster. And there's the, it's the real part that I want. So I'm going to rewind a little bit. And there you go. It's now importing the video. 
The newer iMovie also can't do it. Any newer MacBook can't do it. This is a 2008 um, MacBook that has the FireWire on it. And it's also what VOS Life uses for his capture, I believe. So I think he uses a MacBook like this. No, he uses a MacBook Pro. I have a MacBook Pro, but it's way newer, and it doesn't have the FireWire. If you couldn't tell already, this is kind of a parody of some of V West Life's videos, and same with, and kind of like UXW Bill's videos. Um, they're both cool YouTubers that I like. So kind of a different video, but still a cool video nonetheless. If you have an old camera like this and have no idea how to make it into the real world, well, this is how you do it. Okay, so obviously this is a different computer, but I'm just going to show you how I edit this footage once it's been imported to the MacBook. So you can see I'm actually connecting to the MacBook from this, uh, it claims it's an iMac, but really it's a custom-built Hackintosh. So I'm going to go to Movies, where the iMovie events are, go to iMovie events, and find my event, which is 1025. And there are some of the footage that I've created. I see 27, 10, 15. Those are some of the older ones. So I'm going to scroll down. You can see there's some 1025s here. So I'm going to select all the 1025s that I want. And these are DV files. So not really a common file type, but still, you know common for older cameras to produce. And the reason why I import them to this computer is because this computer actually has Premiere Pro on it, which I have known to love and know really good how to edit with it. Kind of moved away from iMovie. I don't really like it anymore. It's not advanced enough, so I really love Premiere. And thankfully Premiere still supports these DV files perfectly. So I'm going to open up a new Premiere project here. I'm just going to drag the files inside this folder to the Premiere library. So that was a little weird. I think a few of my files are corrupted from like uh, moving the tape around or something. That sometimes happens when you're importing and you kind of rattle up the camcorder a little bit and it kind of hits the tape and makes it bump around. So as you can see, this uh, video is just fine. Of course, it looks pretty terrible it's because I'm half resolution. I'm going to turn this to full resolution because it's still a really low resolution video. It doesn't really need to be on half resolution. And there's a video from the little camcorder. And one really annoying thing that I found. I'm just going to create. I'm going to create a new sequence here. So new sequence. And then I do RE1080P and 2997. Drag one of these clips in here. And keep existing settings. So you can see it's real small. So I'm going to right click on this, scale up to frame size. And one really annoying thing about DV is even though it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you can see it's still got black bars on the top and the bottom and this weird kind of blue line here. What I always do to all my clips is I scale it up by 103%. And that scales it up just enough to get rid of the black bars and the purple line on the side. And then if you're in Premiere and you don't know how to copy this to multiple clips, they have multiple clips of the same DV type. Select the clip, come to Effect Controls, click the Motion, and then just Command C, or come to Edit, click Copy. And then you can just click another clip and paste it in and it'll scale them up by 103 percent and any other keyframes or anything that you add to motion. Now of course I haven't added the DSLR footage because I'm actually filming on the DSLR for the audio. But that's just a little tutorial on how to import DV footage, how to edit DV footage, and also just a comparison between this 2003 camcorder that I use uh, periodically because it has awesome night vision and how to edit it with no regular footage. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.